My name is Mike Urrutia and I work for the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority. And today we're, be we're going to be talking about wastewater. The title of my presentation is Why Are We Afraid of Wastewater? And in, in the first slide that I have, there is a picture of my two kids. My daughter's 26 and my son's 24. And it's all about making sure they have clean water to, to enjoy in the future and for their kids and, and their kids' kids in the future. So, uh, um, so to get on with the presentation, before I get, we start speaking about wastewater in particular, we want to talk about how the water and wastewater industry uh, needs more people to come in, younger people to come into the industry because a lot of, of us are baby boomers and we're retiring. Um, just two weeks ago, we had a gentleman that retired from GBRA um, that had been there for 40 plus years. And I've been with GBRA for 33 years. We're retiring and we need people to come into our, our, our industry for sure. Um, it's a good field for employment. You never hear of a water system or a wastewater system that lays people off. Um, we're about protecting the environment. Um, we are also about continuous, uh, continuous learning. We're always learning new um, aspects and new ways of, of performing our, our jobs at our wastewater plants. We're also licensed uh, with TCQ. Uh, every one of our employees and our operators are licensed with TCQ. I have a, a, an A water and an A wastewater license, which is the highest level of, of license that you can get in the state of Texas. And we're also about continuous advancement of technology. Um, every year there's some kind of new technology that comes out about how, do, can, we, um, how can we improve the process at the, at the water and wastewater plants. One of the new technologies that's out there about wastewater is, um, is membrane technology, where we're using membranes to treat um, our, our wastewater. So the next slide is an aerial view of our wastewater treatment plant in Buda, Texas. So GBRA operates the wastewater treatment plant for the city of Buda. And just want to talk a little bit about the, um, the, the aerial or the, the, the footprint of a, of a wastewater treatment plant. And you can see at the top right hand corner the brown colored basins. That's the activated sludge basins. That's where all the process works. That's where all the bacteria and the organisms that, that do this treatment process for us um, live. From there it goes to those circular um, basins. Those are called clarifiers where we put the activated sludge where all the bugs and the bacteria are. We, we put them in a settling basin or a clarifier and we want to take that clear water off the top and we continue to process that water. The next basins are filters, and then the, the, the basin over to the, to the right is our chlorination system. So we, f we take the clarifier clear water off the top, we chlorinate it, and then we filter it, and then we can pump it over to our discharge uh, point. We also, uh, part of that process is we take the chlorine out or we dechlorinate. We'll talk about that here in a few minutes. The next slide is a, is a quick and basic flow diagram where we have the influent coming in. Influent means it's coming into the plant. It's the raw wastewater. And it goes through a bar screen where we collect all the, the, the plastics, the golf balls. Some people throw money down the, the, um, the, the sewer. I know that, that, that concept of uh, we're just throwing money down the drain. It's money down the toilet. I still don't know why people throw money down the toilet, but we find money once in a while at the, in the bar screen. We also have grit removal. The next slide, the, uh, the next, uh, Basin is grit remover where you can pick up and treat the sand and heavy particles that are in the wastewater. From there it goes to the extended aeration plant, the ex uh, extended aeration basin, where that's where the bacteria and the bugs are that, 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 that process our wastewater. From there we go to this, the clarifier. We talked about that earlier where we just let that, that activated sludge settle and we, we continue to process the water off the top. Then we go to filters, then we disinfect. We can use UV disinfection. So we have UV bulb, bulbs that can um, kill the bacteria that's in that, um, that, that effluent or that treated wastewater. We also can use chlorine. And then we can, um, we can discharge it into our pond or a stream or a lake. The next slide, um, the wastewater process. So just to kind of simplify the whole process, we're trying to take raw wastewater and that's biomass so there's lots of organic material lots of carbon lots of dissolved uh, particles that is a biomass and we're trying to convert that into bugs um, it's almost like being on a farm so we're taking nutrients and we're putting it into plants to grow plants well in this case we're taking these nutrients and growing bugs 
And, and these bugs then, we have to take them out of the process. We have to harvest them every once in a while to keep everything fresh. And we do that via a sludge belt press. The, the, the other thing that we do at, at, in the wastewater process is in the raw wastewater that comes into our plant, um, we have a lot of ammonia. And the reason we have ammonia, it's a, it's a nitrogen product. We, ammonia is toxic to fish, so we could not release ammonia out into the stream because it will kill fish. So we have to convert the ammonia to nitrate. We still have the nitrogen in there. We're not doing anything with the nitrogen. We're just we're adding oxygen and we're letting the bacteria convert the ammonia to nitrate, which is not toxic to fish when we discharge it into the uh, receiving stream. The first process we, we come to at the wastewater plant is the bar screen. We talked about that where we get the golf balls, the plastic toys. We get the non-flushable, flushable wipes. That's a big issue with us. There's a billion dollar business to sell those wipes, but, it, but they don't break down and it causes problems for us at the wastewater plant. We take all those screen materials and we put it into these trash bags to, to, uh, to get rid of them and to, and to eliminate the odors that we might produce. The next slide is the aeration basin. This is where all the processes is, ha are ha is happening. You can see the chocolate colored um, sludge. That is what you want to see. And you can see the aeration bubbles and we, we look at the flow of those bubbles. We want them to be uniform and that's putting oxygen into the process. Those bacteria that convert the ammonia to nitrate are all reliant on oxygen. So one of the main things that an operator does every day is to monitor the dissolved oxygen to make sure that we put we have enough oxygen in the basin. The next slide is the um, the key to this whole process is air because of the oxygen and that's a slide of the blowers. Every activated sludge uh, plant in the world that uses the, uh, the this process has to use air. Lots of uh, it costs lots of money to turn those those blowers. Um, the majority of our um, power bill is is to is to turn those those blowers. The next slide is the organisms in the activated sludge. So if you took a microscope and you looked, that's about an 80 to 100 uh, magnification. These are the organisms that are in the sludge that we're trying to grow. This biomass that we talked about before, we're trying to convert the biomass that's in the raw wastewater into the biomass that's in the activated sludge basin. These are the organisms that are doing that. Those are the, the slide up in the upper right. It's called a stalk cilia. Cilia means hair. And so if you look at that under the microscope when they're alive, the cilia are moving and they're, they're bringing in that water, that, uh, the nutrients into their body so that they can uh, form more organisms and reproduce. We also have creepy crawlers. That lower left-hand slide is a crawler. That's an indication of some older sludge. So we have all different kinds of organisms uh, in, our, um, in our activated sludge. And one of the jobs of the operator is on a daily basis to look at their bugs under the microscope and he'll be able to tell the condition of his sludge and whether he needs to waste sludge or not. The next slide is the advanced treatment for waste uh, for phosphorus removal. So um, one of the advanced treatments that we have to do um, because of our permit limitations is to take phosphorus out of that water column. The way we do that is we add a coagulant. We can add a, um, an iron compound, ferric chloride, or we can add alum, which is an aluminum, aluminum product. And what that does is it binds to the phosphorus, makes it heavy, settles it out, takes it out of the water column, and puts it into the sludge. Um, it's called, we precipitate the phosphorus. And, and again, the reason we're doing this is to meet the permit limits that have been established by TCQ. The next um, stage from the aeration basin is the clarifier. If you look at that blue, that that red pipe in the center of that, um, of that slide, of that, of that basin, that's where the sludge enters the clarifier. It goes up that red pipe, goes into the stilling basin. So what you wanna do is eliminate the horizontal movement and just have vertical movement where it's just, sludge is just settling. The rake on the very bottom continues to turn to concentrate that sludge to the center. And that small pipe on the bottom left is how we return that sludge. We take the sludge out of that basin or we, or we send it to our sludge press to get rid of that sludge. It's all about taking the clear water off of that top of that clarifier to, to continue to process that. This is another slide. The left-hand slide is an actual clarifier. You can see the center of that basin. That's the stilling well. That's where the sludge is coming in from the, the aeration basin and it's starting to settle. The clear water off the top comes over to the left-hand side of that slide over to those V-notch weirs. 
and and then the, and we send that over to um, uh, filtration next and, chlor and chlor chlorination. Another tool that the operator has is he can do a 30 minute settle. He can take a, a, a jar that's calibrated and he sets his timer for 30 minutes and sees and, and he determines how well that sludge is settling. That's another tool that he uses to, to see the condition of his sludge and whether he needs to make modifications to his process. Another advanced treatment are sand filters. So in the old days we didn't have sand filters and now because we want to improve the water quality and because the permits from TCQ are getting more stringent we have to filter. We use sand and this is an advanced treatment it produces very beautiful water and if from time to time we do have to backwash so this is a this is another advanced treatment so we have advanced treatment for getting rid of phosphorus and another advanced treatment is is sand filters for the effluent we also have to after filtration and we add chlorine we add chlorine to kill the bacteria every one of our permits has a limitation of e coli bacteria so that so that we are not putting bacteria into the receiving stream Chlorine does a great job, just like Clorox. Um, we also, on the larger plants, we have to dechlorinate. We have to take the chlorine out of that water before we discharge it into the stream. This is a, the next slide is a picture of the effluent at the Buda plant. And you can see that up, up the stream of that trough, we are actually adding um, fine bubble um, air. So we're adding oxygen to make sure we have enough oxygen in that effluent before we discharge it. It's very beautiful because of those sand filters and the process at Buta. That water is very beautiful. It's crystal clear. The, other, the next few slides I want to focus on the testing. So every week we have to go out and test. That's one of our operators pouring a sample of the effluent into a sample bottle that we have to send over to our laboratory and, and this is done on a weekly basis. So the TCQ permit tells us what kind of per, uh, testing we have to do of our effluent. The, one of the, the common tests is the biochemical oxygen demand. That tells us how much oxygen are we going to take out of that stream if we discharge it into that stream. The total suspended solids, it tells us how much turbidity is in that water. And there, you, you filter it through a pre-weighed filter and you weigh it, you dry it, and you can determine that mathematically. Uh, the other test that we have to do and that's on our permit is ammonia. We talked about that before. Remember, ammonia is toxic to fish. We cannot discharge ammonia into the stream. We have to convert it to nitrates. Phosphorus, we talked about that earlier too. That's on our permits. We have to check that weekly and, um, and, um, and we can do that with coagulation um, as we talked about before. We also have to have, uh, we have a permit limit for our pH. That's usually not an issue. And then there's the bacteria and the dissolved oxygen. The bacteria we have to test every day. And we're out there, our operators have to, have to collect samples and have them tested. This is a slide of the raw wastewater in the effluent. So we talked about that biomass. Well, part of that biomass is all the stuff that's dissolved in that raw wastewater, and it gives it an off color. It's got dissolved paper products, it's got nutrients, it's got urine, it's got feces, and it, and it has a turbid color. The, the jar on the left, it's a yellow color. And then our goal is to is have that crystal clear water, or that effluent in the, in the Erlenmeyer flask to the right. So this is a, um, a slide of the stream discharge for the Buta wastewater tra uh, treatment plant. And I've actually caught fish right downstream on the, uh, about, about 500 yards downstream of that. I've caught uh, largemouth bass, uh, perch, and there's lots of, uh, lots of snakes there too. And there's a, a nice fishing hole that we found. And, and, uh, and I went fishing there. I've been there four or five times and I, I catch fish every time. So, um, the, the next slide is some of the, the additional work that we've done on Plum Creek where the Buta wastewater treatment plant and several other plants discharge into Plum Creek over in the Buta and Kyle area. Uh, we also perform routine monitoring. We go out and we, we test um, the creek uh, monthly. We, we go when it's wet, we go when it's dry um, to, to monitor these sites. We also go to the, each one of those wastewater treatment facilities to see what impact they're having on our stream. Um, we also uh, look at bacteria source tracking. So when we find bacteria in Plum Creek, we, the wastewater treatment plants always get blamed for it. So now we have an ability to collect that sample and determine where that source of bacteria came from. Did it come from dogs? Did it come from cats? Did it come from deer? Or did it come from pigs? So after the wastewater plant, we like to blame the pig, the wild pigs also. So um, it's very interesting some of those, um, the results of the 
the bacterial source tracking. We also look at the fish, we look at the habitat, we look at the benthic organisms. The benthic organisms are the organisms that are in the mud of the creek. And that picture of that fish is a log perch. That is a, 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 a darter, which is very intolerant to pollution. So we're very happy at Plum Creek, we find log perch. That gives us a, that makes us feel like our effluent is not toxic to these the intolerant species uh, for pollution. The, the photograph on the top right is, a, is called a toe biter or helgramite that makes very good fish bait. They are also intolerant of pollution. Um, then on the bottom right is a mayfly. Mayflies are very intolerant. So we're finding all these organisms in Plum Creek and, and those are indicating that um, we are not impacting those particular species. I put that lure with the hook in there so the fly fishermen try to mimic a, a mayfly and they do a pretty good job of that. And, that's one of my goals in the next couple of years is to learn how to fly fish, but I know it's a lot of work. Um, another thing that we have to do from these larger wastewater plants is we have to expose our effluent, send it off to a, a specialized lab, and they expose our effluent to plankton and to minnows. And we're looking for toxicity. We haven't found any toxicity. And um, so just, just to, to reiterate how much testing we're doing on our effluent, to find out if we're toxic to, the, to the, um, the organisms in the stream. Another thing that we have to do when we talked about having to get rid of that biomass of the sludge is we have to test our sludge. We test for metals, we test for organics, we test for all kinds of, 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 of constituents. And we, uh, that, that, that liquid sludge, we have to put it through a belt press, squeeze the water out, and we end up with a cake on the right hand side. What we do with that sludge, we, can, we do two things. We can compost it or we can, um, we can apply it to a field where the farmer grows hay. And it's about recycling. Instead of going to a landfill and filling up the landfill with sludge, we can recycle this sludge. So it's all about recycling. The next slide I put together is what are the pros and cons of wastewater? And I know there are probably a lot more, but I just wanted to focus on just a few points. So some of the pros, um, environmental flows. So we, with the wastewater effluent, it's becoming a hot topic about returning those wastewater flows to the streams instead of not returning them. It's a very hot topic. So it's a, a, a pro of, of wastewater treatment is that we're returning flows in back to the stream. It's conservation of freshwater resources. So if we're using some of this effluent to irrigate um, landscaping, it protects and it preserves our freshwater resources. Reuse water, um, we can use that um, water for golf courses, for instance. Some of these golf courses use half a million gallons a day of water. And we can, instead of using our, our potable water, we can use our effluent. And of course, then we can use the nutrients in the sludge to grow crops or to, to put it into our composting. Some of the cons of wastewater, we are increasing the nutrients in the stream. Um, we, we know that. Um, we can, that, that causes an increase in the algae in the receiving stream. Um, and so that is, that is one of the cons of wastewater when we're discharging into a stream, we may have some more, uh, some additional algae. Um, and then also, there's also a perception that the wastewater will make you sick and it doesn't, it, it does not make you sick. Um, so those are a couple of the pros and cons. And so if we, if we circle back around to the original question, why are we afraid of wastewater? You know, one of the things we could do is we could try to rebrand wastewater. We, you know, companies talk about that all the time. We need to rebrand ourselves because, um, because our old brand is, is getting old. And uh, we could call it environmental flow return. So we're, we're uh, an environmental flow return uh, plant. And we could call ourselves a wastewater purification plant where we're purifying the wastewater. Or we can call it river walk water. That's a, that's a picture of the San Antonio River Walk and 100% of that water in the river, um, uh, in the river walk area is treated effluent from San Antonio. And I remember as a kid at Brackenridge Park, there were huge wells that they were pumping out of the Edwards Aquifer right into the San Antonio River to keep that river walk uh, area filled with water. They've replaced that now with treated, waste, with treated wastewater effluent. So the last slide is don't be afraid of wastewater. So that's the whole point of my, uh, my my presentation is, is, is we shouldn't be afraid of wastewater and I'd be happy to answer any questions. There's my, there's my email, mnurutia at, at gbra.org and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you.